And with over 15 prenatal appointments during the course of your pregnancy, I totally understand that he or she might not be able to make all of them right. But let's go over some of the more eventful appointments uh, that you definitely don't want your partner to miss. You're listening to the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, where you'll gain the tools, knowledge, and confidence you need to erase the unknowns, feel in control, and have an even better birth no matter how you deliver. My name is Liesl Teen, mom of two, practicing labor and delivery nurse, and your host. From over eight years and counting of working at the bedside, I know that knowledge is the key to an even better birth. So tune in each week to learn about all things pregnancy, birth, and postpartum from me, a labor and delivery nurse that's seen it all. And now let's get into this week's episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast. I'm your host, Liesl Teen, and today we are talking about partners and pregnancy. So pregnancy is often a time centered around you, right? The birthing mama. Right from the beginning, you and baby start to bond as your baby grows inside you. But are you wondering how to get your partner a little bit excited about your pregnancy too? Because I know that in the beginning, it can be a challenge for partners to get excited about pregnancy and bond with that baby while they are in your belly. This tends to be especially true in those early weeks and months when you're really not showing and they can't even feel kicks yet or anything. It can all seem pretty abstract, right? Luckily, though, there are a lot of great ways to get your partner excited about your pregnancy right from the start. So today I'm going to talk about bonding ideas between partner and the bump big events that the non-birthing parent can play a role in and inspire some expecting dates you can do in every trimester. With these ideas, your partner will be just as excited about pregnancy as you are. And after this episode, I encourage you to check out episode 70, Why Do We Fight With Our Partners After Having Babies? Yeah, I did an episode on that. (laughs) And episode 136, all about preparing your relationship for baby with Dr. Tracy Daglish. But now let's jump right in. All righty. So I have 11, 11 ways to involve your partner in your pregnancy from the get go. Number one, let's jump right into it. Number one, go to prenatal appointments together, or at the very least, go to the big ones together. Right from the beginning, I would prioritize scheduling your appointments at a time when your partner can join you because having them with you during the appointments, it seems like such a little thing and it's like, oh, just go, whatever, I can tell you how it went, but it does make a difference, not only for you, but for them as well. And with over 15 prenatal appointments during the course of your pregnancy, I totally understand that he or she might not be able to make all of them right, But let's go over some of the more eventful appointments uh, that you definitely don't want your partner to miss. So first one is obviously that very, very first appointment when you see baby's heartbeat for the first time. Kind of feels like a meet and greet, right? But having your partner there will really set the tone for their level of involvement in prenatal care throughout your entire pregnancy. Your partner will get to meet your provider and ask questions right alongside with you. The next bigger appointment, and sometimes at some practices, this is also the first appointment, but that next one is the 12 week, 12 ish week ultrasound. And this is your first glimpse at baby when it kind of looks more like a baby, right? If you get an ultrasound early on between six and eight weeks, you kind of just see a little blob. But at that 12 week ultrasound, you can see a little, a little tiny baby and your partner does not want to miss this. So many people report their partner's perspective on the whole entire pregnancy changing at this point. And seeing that little baby for the first time is enough to bring even the toughest partner, the toughest person to tears, or at least make their heart swell, right? Especially if it's the first time. So try to do everything you can to have your partner at that appointment and present. Hopefully you can schedule it around a time when your partner's available. The next super important one is that 20 week ultrasound. And this is always a good time to bring your partner along. And at this appointment, you'll notice that baby is even less alien like and much more baby. 
This is also an important one because your technician will be looking at your baby's growth and development, checking for any abnormalities. And if there are issues with organ development, uh, your technician might notice them, right? And having your partner present at this appointment will not only be a great support for you, but also an important way for them to feel attached to baby. And then finally, I would at the very least have your partner present at a few of your appointments in that third trimester, okay? Because the third trimester appointments are often filled with just more conversations about your birth experience. And this will allow your partner to be a little bit more involved in understanding and making pain intervention related decisions and decisions regarding immediate newborn care on your birth plan. But if you have them go to all of them, have them go to all of them. I know that was a big number one way to involve your partner in your pregnancy. But number two is you can have fun together announcing your pregnancy to your family and friends. Yeah. Choosing exactly when to announce your pregnancy and how and to who is an important decision to make with your partner and can be just so much fun. So get them involved in the process when you're ready to share publicly. Maybe you guys can do like a little photo shoot or post on social media, or sometimes your partner has like a lot of great funny ideas that you may not have thought about. But this is like a little bonding experience that you guys can do together is announcing that pregnancy. You know, we are always looking for ways to make your journey through pregnancy, birth and postpartum even better. Well, guess what? We've got an incredible free resource for your partner too. It's a 35 page partner support Guide, picture this, actionable tips, education, and information all organized and written to be as helpful as possible specifically for your partner. They'll find info about how to support you during your pregnancy, during birth, the role of education, and they can access discussion questions to prepare your relationship for a new baby. Uh Uh-huh, we went there. There are also tons of links to other posts, articles, and previous podcast episodes that I've done so that your partner can continue their learning. Get your partner ready to support you during birth with this free resource by heading on over to mommylabornurse.com slash partner. That's mommylabornurse.com slash partner to get your free partner support guide today. Number three is plan a co-ed baby shower or a daddy diaper party. Have you guys seen these? They're cute. But co-ed baby showers are becoming a little bit more trendy and more popular. There can still be a lot of fun little shower games, right? And involving your partner might even make it uh, even more hilarious, right? But if you still want to have a more traditional baby shower, personally, I did with the women in your life, Maybe consider inviting your partner to come at the end or just, you know, show up at some point. Or like I said, have a little daddy diaper party. They can have a a little get together themselves. Number four is complete a DIY project for baby's nursery. Yeah, get them involved in the nursery and how it's going to look or assembling the furniture, the crib, right? It doesn't all have to be on you and it really shouldn't all be on you. That is definitely something that you guys can do together. Number five is write letters to baby. I love this one. Together or about certain, you know, milestones in your pregnancy. We all know that it's common to keep like a pregnancy journal or baby book, right? But people don't talk about just writing to your baby a whole lot. Sometimes it's in pregnancy journals to prompt you to write little excerpts to your baby, but oftentimes not. And oftentimes this just kind of gets missed. And I'm sad because I definitely didn't do this during either of my pregnancies. And I wish I had, I wish I could go back. But getting your partner to do the same, like they can also write letters. You don't have to be the only one. Getting your partner to do the same will help them think of baby more, right? And actually envision them as a person and envision them as what it's going to be like to be this person's parent. But nonetheless, documenting this journey about these exciting moments that you're both going to experience together is a surefire way to help your partner get more excited during your pregnancy. Number six is play an ongoing baby name game. Okay, so let me explain this one. You can't come up with a baby's name because choosing a name for your baby is one of the hardest things (laughs) that you'll have to do. There's a lot to think about and it's really heavy. Uh, At least that's how I felt about it. But obviously, your partner will want to weigh in on this, right? And it's important that they do so. But the name game 
it's kind of like, you know, March Madness bracket. That's how I would do it. Uh, that's not how we chose our name, but I would have 10 of my names and 10 of his or her names, right? Each side. And then your partner gets to advance your side and you get to advance your partner's side, right? So you take the first two names, you say, okay, which one you like better, Mary or Sarah? Okay, I like Sarah better. Okay, then Sarah goes forward and then you do his side, right? And you say, okay, which one do you like better out of this one and this one? And you know, it just kind of goes until you have the end, right? And then you have your partner's top name out of your choices and your top name out of your partner's choices. And then I don't know how you decide between those two. I can't give advice on that, but it's just a fun little way to see which name out of your choices your partner likes the best and vice versa. Personally, I like games. So the more things you can do during your pregnancy game wise uh, with your baby and with your partner, the better, in my opinion. You got to keep it playful. <laughs> All right, number seven is keep a countdown going together. Yeah. One of my best friends has a whiteboard hanging in her house with a countdown to her due date. And I thought this was so cute because this is their family's way of getting everybody involved and excited about her pregnancy right from the start. It's like those little boards that you get at Christmas time, right? 25 days till Christmas and you keep advancing the little thing, right? And what they do is her partner changes the number on the countdown each day and then adds a cute little quote or a funny saying or message or drawing or whatever. Okay, that's just how they do it. But just keeping a countdown in general is just a, just a fun little thing you can do together. All right, the sound of that heartbeat means it's time for this week's segment of Birth It Up Babies. This one says, hi, I just wanted to say thank you for creating the labor courses. I did the epidural series and I did all of your techniques to prepare for labor. By the time I got to the hospital, I was five centimeters. Your breathing techniques, birthing affirmations, and pushing strategies were incredible. I gave birth to an eight pound baby and I'm pretty petite with no tearing. My midwife was so impressed on how well I did. Thank you so much for giving me peace of mind during my first labor and delivery. And then she said four little pink heart emojis. Oh, I love it. If you want to have an even better birth, just like this mama, head on over to mommylibernurse.com slash courses to learn more about our three online on-demand birth courses. Number eight is you can encourage them to talk, sing, or read to your baby bump. And as silly as that might seem, one amazing way for your partner to get excited is to interact with the bump, okay? Your bump. And different sources do have different weeks when baby can actually start to physically hear you. But around week 16-ish, there is evidence that they are starting to detect some noise. Maybe not all, but some noise. And by 24 weeks, around 24 weeks, baby can definitely hear and will even start reacting to audio stimuli. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So this means that the more your partner reads, sings, talks to your baby while they're in womb, right? The more baby will be used to and know your partner's voice. So encourage that voice. Number nine is work on your birth plan as a team together. Childbirth is a team sport. I know you're the one doing all the work, but there are a lot of things that your partner can do to help you, to support you in this event, right? And getting your partner involved with the planning ahead of time is important. So they know, you know, you guys are on the same page in terms of how you envision your birth to go. It will also get them more excited about baby's arrival and they'll have a little bit more of an understanding of care options and choices for both you and baby. Number 10, talk about budgeting and finances. Yes, because your budget is inevitably going to change with a new baby joining your family. You might need to plan for a period of time, right, with a reduced amount of money coming in while you're on maternity leave or what that looks like. And there are also expenses related to having a baby, right, like diapers. It's a whole other person in the house. Diapers, baby gear, personal products specific to like postpartum healing, breastfeeding, newborn care. There's just, there can be a lot of expenses. And you'll also want to be sure to look into your co-pays, medical bills that likely will happen. 
and it also might be smart to check out both of your insurance coverages to try and get your baby on the plan that has the best coverage during open enrollment, whenever that may be during your pregnancy. And like I said, looking at finances might not exactly get your partner excited about baby, but it's a way for them to be involved. That's kind of the core message of this episode is like, just get your partner, your partner should be involved in this process. And that will inevitably get them excited. And then finally, number 11, and this is exciting to me, this is we saved the best one for last is plan a baby moon. Uh Uh-huh, you deserve one. If you can afford one, go on a baby moon. Because what could get your partner and you more excited during your pregnancy than going on a little vacation together? Uh Uh-huh. Some people don't go on vacations together, like aside from their honeymoon. So this is important. And this is a chance to be completely present with one another and focus on your new baby's upcoming arrival and your relationship as it relates to your new baby's upcoming arrival. You get the chance to enjoy some baby-free work-free, stress-free time together and just really get excited about becoming new parents because it is it is a lot, but it is so exciting. And it doesn't really have to be expensive or extravagant. You really can plan a baby moon on any budget with the right tips and ideas, I promise. You can make it real, real cheap. And that's it. Those are my 11 tips. All of these things together will hopefully help to include your partner and remove some of the abstractness the uh, right <laughs> of pregnancy and most importantly have a blast right really connecting and bonding together during your pregnancy because it is something that you guys did together to start <laughs> right and it's something that you guys should go through together as much as possible next week on the mommy liberators podcast we're doing a little birth story so be sure to stay tuned to that and I will see you guys next week. Already feeling a little more confident about pregnancy, birth and newborn life? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can continue to erase the unknowns and never miss an episode. And if you're looking for even more, Instagram is definitely where I hang out the most. Come join our community of more than a half a million moms for birth education, tips, and solidarity. You can find me at mommy.labornurse. Check out today's show notes and a searchable library of every Mommy Labor Nurse podcast episode at mommylabornurse.com slash podcast. And while you're there, be sure to head to the blog to learn about our online birth classes too. See you next week. And remember, you can have an even better birth, no matter how you deliver.